remember when we used to run away through the night. What does perfect even mean? Is there even such a thing? Ooh, ooh. Can we switch up all the rules? And imagine a utopia Darling, I'm just so fed up With these expectations They keep weighing me down My heart is begging me to get the hell out I'm done. 
Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Sherlock Holmes Crimes and Punishments. Hope everyone's doing alright today. Um, give me a second, just making sure everything's working. There we are. So, we finished the bloodbath case yesterday. And we ended the episode just starting a new case. So this one's called the Abbey Grange Affair. Don't quite know what it's going to be about, but let's find out. The game is afoot. Not a word. Into your clothes and come. I'll wait for you in the sitting room. I've just received a note from Inspector Lestrade, a letter from the suburbs. He is in need of my presence. Whenever he has asked for my assistance, it has always turned out to be entirely justified. I fancy that every one of his cases has found its way into your collection. Uh, yes, they all seem worthy of... However, I regret your fatal habit of looking at everything from the point of view of a story instead of a scientific exercise. Oh, Holmes, you... I beg your pardon, I digress. It would be much better to examine this letter than to try to convince you. Ah, I wonder if he's actually moved his telescope. I'll keep trying this. Nope. Um. The letter is on the table, Holmes. Um. You should take a look. <laughs> I can tell from Lestrade's handwriting that he was in a hurry when he wrote this letter. It's still peeping, yeah. A wax seal with the monogram E.B. The Brackenstall family coat of arms. So, what is it, Holmes? Promising, as always. It appears to be a case of murder. So you believe that Sir Eustace is dead? I should say so. Lestrade wouldn't have sent for me for less. His writing shows considerable agitation, and he is not an emotional man. These people belong to high society. The quality of the writing paper, the E.B. monogram, their coat of arms. The crime was committed before midnight. Holmes, how can you possibly tell? Well, it is all thanks to Lestrade. He wrote his letter at 3.30 in the morning. Imagine the chain of events before that. The local police had to be called in. Scotland Yard was notified. Lestrade himself had to make haste there and finally compose the letter he sent to me. All of that makes for a fair night's work. It makes sense. Lestrade also speaks of the woman he released. That seems to indicate that she had been held somewhere during the crime. Much time has been wasted. Let us find a cab and go to Abbey Grange immediately. I live in hope of an interesting morning. Well, let's do as he says. Let's go straight to Abbey Grange. Ah, Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson, here you are. I'm very glad that you have come, but perhaps I should not have troubled you after all. And why is that? Lady Brackenstall has come to her senses, and she has given so clear an account of the affair that there is not much left for us to do. 
You remember that Lewisham gang of burglars? What, the three Randalls? Exactly. The father and two sons. It's their work. They stole a silver service, which is of great value. Sir Eustace Brackenstall is dead, then? Yes. His head was knocked in with his own poker. A violent act of aggression. Yes, the poor lady. She has had a most dreadful experience. She was assaulted and tied to a chair. But I think that you would best see her and hear her account of the facts. She is in the morning room with her maid, to raise a right. Where is the body of the deceased? In the dining room. We haven't touched anything. All right. I'm going to examine it. Very good, Watson. Give me a second. Almost always makes me jump when that happens. <laughs> yeah, Watson does make a good bet. Lord Brigham Brackenstall. Lord Ramsay Brackenstall. Baron Linden Brackenstall. That's a lot of... Uh... Lady Brackenstall awaits you in the morning room. Sir Wartham Brackenstall. Lord George Brackenstall. That's a lot of Brackenstall. The Brackenstall family seems rather austere. This way? Lady Brackenstall awaits you in the morning room. Must be, must be this way then. Ladies, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I'm assisting Inspector Lestrade in this investigation. Mr. Holmes, I am the wife of Sir Eustace Brackenstall. We were married only a year ago. I am sorry for your loss. Please accept my deepest condolences. I suppose that it is no use my attempting to conceal that our marriage has not been a happy one. I fear that all would tell you that, even if I were to attempt to deny it. Hmm. Examiner. Yeah, definitely not a happy one. The bruises can still be fresh though. It, I mean it makes her a massive suspect because fresh bruising... No, he was obviously hitting her. What am I missing here? So maybe she got fed up and killed him. Never know. I'm missing something here. Nope. Pale cheeks. 
Can you describe to me the events of yesterday evening? Is it really necessary? I have already told Inspector Lestrade all that happened. Yes, madam, it is. I will tell you then. Sir Eustace retired about half past ten. I sat in this room until after eleven, absorbed in a book. Before I went upstairs, I entered the dining room to fetch a candle and... Oh, God. Please, go on. As I approached the French window, I found myself face to face with an elderly, broad-shouldered man who had just stepped into the room. Close behind the first man, I saw two others. One of them struck me a savage blow with his fist and felled me unconscious to the ground. And then? When I came to myself, I found that they had secured me tightly to a dining room chair. It was at that instant my unfortunate husband entered the room. He fought with the intruders? Yes, I think he had heard them, for he was holding his stick. But they were three, and he eventually succumbed. One of them, the elder one, struck him a terrible blow with the poker. I fainted once more. When I opened my eyes, they had withdrawn. Then my brave Teresa came to my assistance. Did these three villains steal anything? Yes. I found that they had taken the silver from the sideboard, but you can see for yourself in the dining room. You mentioned that your marriage was not a happy one. Was there anything specific that was troubling you? Hmm. Was not a nice man when he was drunk, and he suffered from dark moods, but nothing else. The bruises on your hands are at least one week old. Your husband caused those bruises? Oh, do you? Yes, he did. He was very angry at the time. Out of control. Again. Sir Eustace was a drunkard. To be tied to such a man for life is worse than death. Your ladyship? I explained some of it. Teresa, I would like to hear your testimony. Certainly, sir. As I sat by my bedroom window, I saw three men in the moonlight down by the lodge gate. But I thought nothing of it at the time. Oh, if I'd known. And then? I went to bed, and it was more than an hour after that I heard my mistress scream. And down I ran, to find her tied to the chair and him on the floor with his head smashed. That's all I know. Hmm. The description of the Randall gang provided by Lady Brackenstall is identical to the one in the Times article. Mm, still suspicious. Hmm. These scratches are most definitely made by the picture frame. This is Sir Eustace's safe. There may be something important inside. I must ask Lady Brackenstall to open it. This photograph of Lady Brackenstall and her maid Teresa was taken at a port, but which one? So the lady and her maid came from Australia a year and a half ago on this ship.
Lady Brackenstall, could you open this wall safe? No, it is my husband's safe. I do not know the combination. We have to open it. Your ladyship. Do you think there's something going on between these two? I feel like they're already covering each other's backs. Let us try to open this safe. This safe can be cracked. I only have to pay attention. The dial will vibrate when it is set to the correct number. I was going to say, how do I set my keyboard to vibrate? I feel like there is, is a scandal going on here. In a safe behind a painting, it should not really pose a challenge for a criminal. Antique coins, possibly of value, but they're scattered without care. <laughs> what does that make a difference? They're scattered without care. <laughs> Let's talk to oh, What a horrible. Nope. Yeah. Sorry, so maybe Eustace's doctor speaks of his violent behaviour. Yes, Sir Eustace was an extremely violent man. A detestable human being, to be more precise. It is true that he once threw a decanter at me, and all because I dared to stand up to him in defence of my mistress. Sly devil. God forgive me that I should speak of him so now that he's dead. But a devil he was, if ever one walked the earth. We met him only 18 months ago. She'd only just arrived in London. Yes, it was her first voyage. She'd never been from home before. One her with his title and his money and his false London ways. If she made a mistake, she has paid for it, if ever a woman did. She doesn't have any friends here, so it was specially hard for her. Hmm. Oh, what a horrible... Let's go see the crime scene. The, the body is still in the dining room where the murder took place. All right, Lestrade, keep your tits on. What do you know about Sir Eustace, Inspector? What was his reputation? A charming man when sober, but an absolute demon when he was drunk. In such moments, he was apparently capable of anything. Why, once he splashed fuel on Lady Brackenstall's dog and set it alight. But yeah. Another day, he threw a decanter of wine at Miss Wright's head. Hmm, the alcohol seemed to madden him. To the point that we were forced to intervene several times to avoid a scandal. I feel like this is a scandal, though, Inspector. Hot dog. Oh, so many clues to begin with. I, I, I feel like this is the way I'm going. Let's go 
and investigate. You should examine the body of Sir Eustace Brackenstall. All right, Watson. The hunting scene. <laughs> A hunter's cabin. They liked hunting, then. Oh, leaves outside. A trapper's hut. A trapper's hut. This glass has some wine traces, but no visible bees wing. There is bees wing at the bottom, as if the wine had not been decanted before being poured. This glass has some wine traces, but no visible bees wing. It is rather strange that only one of these glasses has dregs of bees wing inside it, while the other two are clear. A decanter standing next to the open bottle, an inseparable pair indeed. Chateau Calon Ségur, French wine, Grand Cru. A deer hunt. This door leads to the upstairs bedrooms. Apparently, the criminals did not venture there. The hunting scene. <laughs> Every picture is just a hunting scene. These wine bottles are expensive and mostly from France. These wine bottles are expensive and mostly from France. This candlestick is valuable. It is interesting that it was not also stolen. Yeah, the robbery doesn't make any sense. Like, already, like, the robbery just doesn't make any sense. An empty silverware box. It appears that the intruders have stolen the contents. A bottle of wine is missing here. The criminals did not thoroughly ransack the house. They only took a little silverware. It makes no sense. It makes literally no sense, the robbery. So, Watson, what have you learned from examining Sir Eustace's body? Well, I can confirm that the death was instant. Sir Eustace was facing his attacker when he received the blow to his head. There are no other apparent injuries. Barefoot. He had therefore been in bed and did not have time to fully dress. <laughs> Quite a large stick, a formidable weapon. That must be the murder weapon. The head was cracked with the force of the blow. It is covered in blood. Sir Eustace might have struck his head upon it while falling from the blow. That is one possible explanation. Exactly. I, and if you noticed, his wife's story and the maid's story did not add up.
appears that the bell rope was cut by someone taller than me. A fur trader's cabin. A fur trader's cabin. Something really doesn't add up here. Where's this chair out here? Sailor's knot. That's interesting. This rope was handled by the murderers. We need a scent hound to follow their trail. I will take it with me. This is the chair that Lady Brackenstall was tied to. What have you seen now? Shiny that floor is, Jesus. Oh yes, I get to bring out Toby. Good old doggy. Almost looks like blood. I guess there's, there's nothing out here yet. It just doesn't make any sense to me, like... I think my dog knows I'm gonna get the dog out. Let's grab Toby. Come on, Toby. We need the best nose in the British Empire on this case. Ah, oh, look at Toby. I can play as Toby. <gasps> nice. Who would have thought that you can play as a dog? Toby's called magical powers. For some reason, when they were making off with the silverware. Exactly. I, I, I feel like they've just hidden it in there. There's blood on this. I already. I didn't even need Toby for this. I already noticed there was blood on this. Scent leads to the well. I should check it. The intruder's trail is lost behind this wall. 
the criminals left the house through the French window. They walked to the shed, then across to the well, before fleeing by climbing over the wall. I wonder why they chose such a winding route. I think it goes deeper as well. I think that... Because she came from Australia. The picture I've got so far. She came from Australia. Um, obviously by a ship. And landed... Somewhere. Where she shortly after married Sir Eustace. So what's to say it wasn't already like an arranged marriage. Um, but she fell in love with a sailor. Um, on the way, and then together they've conspired, because obviously after finding out what Sir, Sir Eustace was like, obviously he beat his wife. They all, all three of them, the maid, um, the sailor, and, and the woman, I can't remember her name. Lady Brackenstall. All conspired. To kill Sir Eustace. That's why there wasn't much of a struggle. I think I've already cracked this case without this having. Hook might be useful. Unless there's something else that's going to spin in the evidence. This old suitcase sounds hollow. It must be empty. Bags of seed. Some empty bags were recently moved. I feel like there's something hidden in here. Yeah, there's something missing. We're not seeing something. Yeah, I reckon they've hidden the silver in here. That's why they've... Small gardening tools. Nothing of great interest. They're hidden the wealth, so it doesn't get... Taken by the police or something. Oh, there we go, glittering object. There's something glittering at the bottom there. But how can I reach it? Look, they're wanting to get rid of this. The wheel handle is old and rusty. It seems to be used infrequently. Hmm. The bucket can be easily removed. Remove the bucket then. If only I had something with which I could lift that object. Oh, would you look at that? It's like clockwork. And this will be where the silverware is. Silverware? This is hardly a coincidence. The Brackenstall coat of arms. It appears that we have found the stolen silverware. They were hiding it for later. This is quite an easy case. Yeah, pocket it. I'll pocket it, it's fine. Hello, Toby. The intruder's trail is lost behind this wall. Let's just go and talk to them briefly before we go back to Baker Street. But I feel like I have relatively cracked this case already. Inspector, I have recovered the stolen silverware. You are a wizard, Mr. Holmes. And where is it? In the garden well. Excuse me? Unique. 
isn't it? Rather absurd. What is the point of stealing silverware and then throwing it down into a well? Perhaps it was used as a temporary hiding place, or simply the thieves wanted to get rid of it. It is up to us to solve this mystery. I do feel like it was these guys with a, with a third accomplice. I really do. There are three glasses on the dining room table. I was wondering if... Oh, I forgot. When I came to myself the first time, each of them had a glass in his hand. They might have been a father and his two sons. They talked together in whispers, and then they left. She's not giving me face, like, eye contact when she's saying either about it. We found it. your silverware, Lady Brackenstall. It had not been taken very far. Is that true? I am very thankful to you, Mr. Holmes. Your ladyship? See, she, she doesn't look... Hmm. We found your mistress's silverware. Oh, that's good news. You really are as clever as they say. Indeed. Something fishy. There's definitely something fishy. About that. All my senses are just saying it's them. It's, it's some form of scandal, no doubt about it. Some form of scandal. Have you found something interesting? Let us see how the rope was cut. The fibers at the end of the rope are smoothly cut. Let us try to find out what tool was used to cut the rope. The fibers from this cut appear to be different. The fibers from this cut appear to be different. If I cut the rope with a knife, it matches the original. There's a third person, a sailor. It's got to be something like that. It's got to be some form of affair. Wait, it is called the Abbey Grange Affair. Here it is. The shipping company, the Adelaide Southampton London Line, and its address. Interesting. It must be the place where they keep the records, including the one for the crew of the Rock of Gibraltar. I think that if you pretend you're from Scotland Yard, they'll give it to you without any problems. But I have another solution. I'll call in the specialist. Hmm. Wiggins. Wiggins, could you come upstairs, please? At your service, Mr. Holmes. I need a register, my young friend. If you could borrow it, there will be half a guinea for every one of you. 
I need the crew list of the Rock of Gibraltar in 1893 and their current employment. I'm straight on it, Mr. Holmes. Do you really think they'll find it, Holmes? My secret police is better than the Yard in many ways. Hmm? Here it is, Mr. Holmes. But we can't take it back. It's too risky. Put it on the table. I'll take care of it. Good work, young Wiggins. This list shows the senior officers of the Rock of Gibraltar, on which Lady Brackenstall and her maid made their voyage. Lady Brackenstall does not know anyone in England. This must mean that someone on this list is our mysterious visitor. And these are the lists of the senior officers of the Adelaide, Southampton, London Line ships. Let us find out who was in London upon November the 7th. This list shows the scene. I do not think that this sailor has any con- This officer was on a ship that sailed half a month ago. He wasn't in London. I do not think that this sailor has- I do not think- I do not- I do not think- This officer was on a ship that sailed half a month ago. Mr. Jack Crocker was in London upon the date of the crime and he is due to depart in two days. I do not... I do not... I do not think that this sailor has any connection to the case. This officer is still at sea, therefore he cannot be involved. This officer is still at sea, Therefore, he cannot be involved. This officer is still at sea. Therefore, he cannot be involved. This officer is still at sea. Therefore, he cannot be involved. Captain Jack Crocker is our mysterious visitor. He was the only one around at the time of the murder. This Crocker, do you think... It would be interesting to meet him. Our young friend should be able to find him. Yes, we now have to dress as a sailor again. Wiggins. Could you find a way to bring this Captain Crocker here to us? Here? Holmes, that could be dangerous. No problem, Mr. Holmes. Mr. Holmes, I was informed that you were looking for me, and I'd like to know why. Yes, it is important that we talk. You will soon understand why. 
to examine him first. Is he honest though? You are acquainted with Lady Mary Brackenstall, are you not? Yes, I think I do remember her, from when I was first officer, but I still don't see... It seems your relationship went beyond that of mere passenger and first officer. How dare you? Indeed, how reckless a feeling is love, particularly if one is prepared to commit a murder in its name. Explain yourself this instant! You are aware that the murder made the headlines of the morning press. You read the newspaper report, but to your dismay, found it much fabricated. Once you learned that I wanted to see you, you came straight away. You needed to know what I had found. You? And what do you know? That evening, you were with Lady Brackenstall, despite the danger. I'm not afraid, Mr. Holmes. Besides, all of this is just guesswork. You would be right. If there was no evidence. What then? Lady Brackenstall was tied to a chair on the night of the murder. And it was you who tied her up. You call that evidence? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yes, as she was tied with a sailor's knot, your handiwork. So. It's a sailor who's done it. That proves nothing, Mr. Holmes. I'm not the only sailor in London right now. Your theory is flawed, anyway. On the night of the murder, I was aboard the Sharp. I was supervising the repair of a porthole. At night? It was an emergency. There was a leak. You can ask the ship's carpenter. He can confirm. I'm sure that he can. Perfect. In that case, we have nothing more to talk It's a cover-up, that. Good evening, gentlemen. Definitely a cover-up. Holmes, what should we do now? Would you like to check his alibi? No. There is no doubt that these men will testify in his favour, and there will be no way to check. Exactly. So, what then? So, we must work with what we have. We have all the puzzle pieces. Now I understand why you dissected the bell rope. Nah, he's involved. And there we go. Mystery solved. Wiggins, could you ask Mr. Crocker to come here again, please? Right away. I'm not letting him get away with this. Why did you make me come here again, Mr. Holmes? It is over. I know that it was you who killed Sir Eustace Brackenstall. What? I know because of the height at which the rope was cut. The knife used was a sea knife. The knots were sailor's knots. And not least, the sheer force that was put behind the killing blow. And because you are the only one who knows Lady Mary Brackenstall in London. And because you love her. It's true. It is time for you to tell us the whole truth. Told you. I admit that I loved Mary madly from the first day that I met her. But I never did come to visit her, for I believed that she was in a happy household. When I talked to her maid who told me everything, I was insane with rage. 
I was due to set sail for six months away. I wanted only to see her again. But it turned into a damnable nightmare when he barged in. He dared raise his hand to her. He! He was not even worthy of licking her boots. Oh, I regret nothing. I admit I killed the monster out of love for her. She will forgive me if she is able. Lady Brackenstall already forgave you. She said nothing. Mary! But that makes her an accomplice as well as her maid. It places her in danger yet again. Mr. Holmes. You would not have managed to protect her. Till I die, do you hear me? Here is a letter that sets everything clear. And it is the one that should be disclosed to the police. I am the only culprit. Mary had nothing to do with it. Now it is time to end this. Oh, no, you don't. You should have let me die. How can I live if Mary suffers? I am sorry, Captain Crocker, but there has been quite enough death in this case. Inspector, I give you Sir Eustace's killer. He tried his best to perform his own justice. Well, I'm not surprised. Yes, it was me. I confess. Here is a piece of evidence that can be used in court. Perfect. A case that went smoothly for once. Relatively easy case. Only 35% made the same chop. What? I'm surprised that people aren't saying, uh. That I don't have a heart. Anyway, I think I'm gonna end this episode here. It was quite a short one, I know. But I'd rather try and do this on a case by case episode. So if you've enjoyed this episode, please follow, like, subscribe, uh, comment, everything, really. Um, it would be much appreciated. It helps me keep, carry on making videos like this. And it's nice to hear from you guys as well. I'm one follower away from 1k followers on Twitch. So, if anybody's watching and hasn't followed, you would make my day. Um, go check out my new merchandise. It's on my website. Um, which is in a lot of my links. Um... And I'll see you in a bit, probably with Alien Isolation. I've got loads of games to play today, so I'll be on most of the day streaming. So I'll see you guys in a bit. Stay epic.